Hi guys, today a look inside this old military radio. It is the RT351 from the Clansman Company, so British Army Radio. It is covered with NATO numbers. There is one here, there is, uh, there is another one here just for this part. In quite a roof condition, as you can see. Actually, I had to drill holes in the box because it was bent towards the internals and everything was stuck inside. So I had to drill holes, put a big screw in it, in them, and pull them, pull with uh, big players and I was able to unbend a little bit, just enough to uh, be able to extract the contents. So, a lot of uh, plates with information. You find the complete uh, operator uh, manuals online, I will link the, in the video description. Here, interconnect side with uh, quick connectors for uh, long distance wire use with a remote. You can do it. Here, frequency selectors on main function switch. These weird things are apparently uh, antenna sockets. On missing some uh, spring uh, clamps here to attach to the next section because you have no battery, you have nothing. It cannot work by itself, you need extra parts. So I will open it and we'll see. I hope we will be able to see. Uh, completely the electronics. So I believe you have to start from the back and with the correct size of tool it will be better. Captive screws here. As you can see It was very cheap on eBay, it was uh, 15 British pounds. So here we have a quick disconnect with uh, flat flex, very uh, thick flat flex actually with some kind of uh, glass wall, glass fiber material. And here a pretty uh, regular electronics as you can see, not even uh, conformal coated. BD131 transistor, some uh, Kemet total alarm caps, uh, carbon, uh, regular carbon resistors, and just the more flat flex to connect to the two plugs here, one little transformer for uh, long distance use, maybe over radio, and uh, the function switch here in orange, uh, falling off uh, rubber seal spring contacts to do some grounding with the contents are here like such so we undo the other side oops very curious to see what there is inside oops okay. Are they like this? Nothing works. You want. I should be able to pull out. Yes, so here we have a nice information. This equipment contains beryllium oxide. Consult the EMIR, whatever it means. I found the EMIR online and actually. Uh, it says just that some transistors have beryllium. So not a lot of information. So here is what the inside look like. Uh, here you have the damage from the bent uh, cover. And uh, well, it looks like it is all made with modules soldered to two PCBs more on this side so it will be impossible to have a look at the electronics except maybe one or two of them without actually 
unsoldering, everything which could be quite damaging and destructive. Uh, what to do if only I had another one in better condition? So here is the second one, here onto the uh, mounting bracket with extra parts, the uh, surf antenna. Focus, please. Focus. So the uh, surf, it is called antenna tuner on the 20 watt amplifier. So these two units will be featured in another video. I will show you the contents. But uh, obviously I will keep this assembly as a collection piece. I am still missing at the bottom here either a battery compartment or a hand generator. But good news, as I have a second radio in good condition, I can totally scrap this one in order to undo completely all the modules unsolder them and have a detailed look at all the electronics. So for this purpose, uh, I will today in this video, I will just take it apart. I will not make a video of me unsoldering tediously dozens of solders, but the uh, next uh, video will be about all the modules already removed and have a look inside them. So today we will just uh, take it apart. So here, I guess, actually, this part I might keep it as a spare, not sure. Not much to see here, I will see. The case will probably go to the scrap yarn given its condition. And uh, yes, today we take apart this module. So apparently you have a front piece here, which is the same piece and the frame between the two uh, circuit boards. Here you can see here interconnects in a flat flex, and more interconnects at the front. But according to the uh, maintenance manual I found, it is possible to remove the front panel, and it will allow to undo completely the electronics from the frame. So it is just what I want to do today. I hope it will work. So here we have uh, antenna PNC connector. So this one will be scrapped obviously. And these are not expensive these radios. You can find them at around 10 or 20 British pounds when you are lucky. Some people sell them a lot more, up to 250. But with a little bit of luck, you can find them, and they are not really, really common. They are really common to find, so not a big deal to scrap one. So this thing, weird thing, seems to be. The rotary socket for uh, antenna, yes, oops, I did just break this, actually I did re-glue it myself because it was uh, already broken, and I did forget about it, um, so it was just for the purpose of uh, having it together for the video, anyways. This one is broken, but the other one on the other radio is, is good. So, interesting part, and it is connected to the radio with a, a nice uh, uh, connector here with golden wire inside, golden spring wire, apparently, something like this. Okay, so this is off, and according to the manual I found online, the next part is to undo. Eight screws here that secure the uh, switches to the uh, buttons. So the buttons might remain on the uh, front panel here, but the actual switches should come off when I undo the PCBs. 
with screws, but maybe worth keeping because they are special uh, military grade brass screws apparently. I will also retrieve uh, captive uh, Allen screws here. Always good to have. Okay, so this is done. And now I believe I must undo most of these things in green. This one is loose, by the way. This one also. And it should allow me to separate the PCBs. It will be a real fun to unsolder everything. So it is a kind of construction I have already seen on military radios. Everything soldered like this. Onto a PCB. Okay, super tedious to take apart to repair. Not. Uh, Really hyper friendly, quite weird. I believe I have to cut wires here. So will it come off or not? This thing. I will first undo the other side. It's probably a lot of interesting stuff in all these modules. And as I was saying previously, look. Every one of them has its own NATO number. So I wonder how they did have enough NATO numbers available. Because sometimes the use of the, they made of these numbers is quite insane. Also, everything has a serial number. And I did just put here what seems to be a dead code of 1979. So probably completely uh, transistorized radio, no vacuum tube. Okay, so where are we? Okay, so this is coming off, as you can see. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, a flat, a flex rigid construction of a PCB, it looks like. The flex part is sandwiched shed between the two rigid parts. Obviously, here uh, evidence of uh, previous uh, repairs. This module was replaced. So now, yes, as expected, I am able to undo the switches, the same model that we have uh, here, apparently. And yes, the button in the front is just secured with a chair clip. Okay, we have here some kind of insulator material in fiberglass. And uh, here apparently the ground contact. So this is for powering the radio, these two things, and they will stack together. As you can see here, you have the same thing here. And they will stack when you connect the radio mechanically to the next part and they will interconnect. Quite a nice feature of this thing. Okay, so where are we? Apparently, all the green screws need to be undone. So we will undo this also. Maybe it is still securing this side to the frame. So I know if I undo the orange screws, I will be able to undo these two covers. But I prefer to, to keep it for the video where I will show all the electronics that are currently hidden in this module. So the beryllium is apparently contained in power transistors only. I will be careful if I see anything that looks like it's in compound, but I believe it is just the transistors according to the information I found, so as long as I don't crack open the transistor, it will be all good. 
Okay, oh, here we have some kind of a little, almost, yes, little connector. Ah, oh, it is the uh, power input from the side. Okay. In fact, I did forget one of the screws in the front. It does not help. Come up. Yes, exactly as described in the uh, repair manual. So, more circlips here, and you can see this complicated part is actually uh, the front panel of the radio and the frame. So, it will go to the scrapyard as so after I finish cleaning it up because I don't need to keep it anymore. And here we are the electronics. Complicated assembly here with four uh, switches. Quite interesting. And the uh, main interest units are, of course, all these modules, which seem to be. Uh, so obviously, here we have power transistors. It is a, there is a heat sink in this module which was connected, bolted to the frame of the radio and here also. So this must be the transmitting part. Here you can see this part of flat flex is actually added and soldered here so it will be able to, possible to uh, undo it uh, completely. And it will be necessary anyways to have access to the uh, other solders behind them and oh, so we I see some screws that are apparently securing the modules to the boards so it will be quite a lot of work to unsolder everything as you can see I will do it a little bit at a time I guess but you get the idea of uh, what it is inside this RT351 radio. Now what I want to do is uh, really uh, remove the modules and see exactly which kind of electronics we have. So uh, for now, thanks for watching. Bye bye.